this is part 9 of entity framework tutorial in this video we'll discuss overriding stored procedure defaults with entity framework code first approach this is continuation to part 8 so please watch part 8 before proceeding we will be modifying the example that we worked with in part 8 so if you recollect from the previous video session this line of code right here has generated these three stored procedures employee delete employee insert and employee update Notice the names of the stored procedures. The naming convention that's used by Entity Framework by default is entity name underscore whatever action the stored procedure is going to do. Here, this stored procedure is actually deleting an employee. So, employee underscore delete. For insert, it is employee underscore insert and for update, employee underscore update. Now, these are the default names that are automatically generated by the entity framework. Now let's say I want to change the name of this stored procedure for example employee underscore delete to be something like delete employee. Is that possible? Absolutely. And the way we do that is by using this map to stored procedures method and notice that here we are using the lambda expression and we are invoking the insert method and then here we are specifying the name that we want okay so we want the stored procedure to be insert employee and that's what we have specified here and then we are calling map to stored procedures method again and then using another lambda expression here and invoking the update method and specifying the name of the update stored procedure and the same thing for delete okay so if you notice here we are calling map to stored procedures method three times so this code will generate you know the stored procedures as you can see here now this same code can also be rewritten like this so this code right here is more concise okay so here notice what we are doing we are actually chaining insert update and delete methods okay and we are calling map to stored procedures method just once okay so either this code or this code is going to produce the same thing you know the three stored procedures with the custom names that we have specified and another thing that you notice if you look at these stored procedures you know all of them has got parameters and look at the names of the parameters you know these are the default parameter names that entity framework is, is using by default the naming convention for the parameters is you know it takes out the property of the entity and then simply prefix and add symbol before that so employee entity has got an ID property and if we want to delete an employee entity we just need the ID uh, parameter so it's just using one parameter here sim by simply prefixing the add symbol if you look at update uh, stored procedure so update stored procedure has got all the properties uh, I mean all the parameters notice that employee entity if you recollect from the previous video session it has got ID name gender and salary properties and the parameters are simply prefixed with an at symbol so these are the default names that entity framework uses for you know the stored procedure parameters now is there a way to change them absolutely and the way we do that is by using the dot parameter function so here look at this this line right here is going to change the name of the insert stored procedure to insert employee and then dot parameter so we are calling the parameter function and here we are saying okay to name property of the employee entity use this as the name of the stored procedure parameter employee name similarly for gender employee gender and for salary employee salary and these three parameters right here are for insert employee stored procedure and these are for update employee and this two parameter is for delete employee stored procedure so this piece of code right here is going to change both the names of the stored procedures as well as the names of their respective parameters okay and to speed things up I have already typed this code in the notepad so let's copy that and paste it within this on model creating so instead of this line right here let's paste this piece of code and let's format this so we are invoking map to stored procedures method and then you know using a lambda expression we are invoking the insert method and these chained dot parameter method calls are going to change the um, you know 
parameter names of the stored procedure and this will change the name of the stored procedure itself the same logic applies for update employee and delete employee so let's go ahead and run our project but before we do that let's actually drop the sample database that we already have and then let's go ahead and run our web form so this should generate the sample database, create the employees table, and also the three stored procedures with the names that we have specified, and the parameter names should also be whatever we have specified. Okay, so obviously at the moment it has, you know, generated a brand new sample database. So let's go ahead and refresh that. So we have the sample database there, have the employees table and if we expand programmability and then stored procedures look at the names of the stored procedures now insert employee update employee and delete employee and if you look at for example update employee and then parameters look at that they are now employee id employee name employee gender and employee salary the names that we have given it okay and if you look at this web form it is not displaying any data uh, that's basically because the table is empty so let's actually go ahead and execute this insert script So we have sample data there. So let's reload this page. So notice that we get the data. And let's quickly test this to make sure it still works the same way as before. So the update is working. And let's enter a test employee. And insert is working. And let's try to delete uh, you know, the same employee. And the delete is working as well. So the application is working the same way as before. And you have just seen how to customize the names of the stored procedures and you know the names of the respective uh, parameters. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.